Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we have all the new micro splines. Nice, so we've got some cool Kashima stuff and some wicked new stuff for you guys. Okay, so straight into news, and what's up first, Henry? First of all, it's something I'm just gonna skim over with a hop and a dash. Yep. There are some jorts available, some oh. mountain biking jorts, denim, stretchy shorts. Yep. That I think are gonna be a bit of a crowd divider, but I just thought I wanted to give them a nod. So this is purpose-built stretchy denim shorts oh, for yeah. bikes, not just stretchy denim. It's for the person that puts a lot of effort into trying to look like they put no effort in at all. I mean, I was, <clears throat> I was going to point at myself, but <laughs> it's actually, they look super cool. Kind of ridiculous, but why not? Uh, yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> moving swiftly Mo on. Moving swiftly <laughs> on. Um, I hope they're now manufacturing the micro spline system, uh, which is compatible with their Pro 4 hubs and many other options available there. Hope, of course, are famous for having their disc brakes and various different types of hub on the market and all sorts of other products now. But it's nice to see them adding that Shimano micro spline, uh, along with quite a few other companies now by all accounts, so you can all make the most of Shimano 12 speed at last. So, Doddy, in a sentence, do you think you could explain what micro spline is? Yeah, okay, so it's technically the third style of free hub body available. And a free hub body is the part of the hub that a cassette sits on. Now, the original ones, as you can see on screen now, they're available in various different speeds to suit different size and range cassettes. Now, the problem with those was the spines were quite wide on those, and they're actually made of a softer material to keep the weight down, and occasionally they could get damaged. Yeah. And then SRAM basically came out with their own system called the XD, uh, known as XD driver. And their system enabled them to fit a tiny little 10 tooth because previously the smallest you could get was an 11 because of the lock ring, the way it worked on the end. Now Shimano's system is going back to the spline, but they've done a micro spline, so the whole lot is smaller with deeper splines with a different interface and it still allows the use of a lock ring, but more importantly, the smaller uh, 10 tooth on there. So why now? Is it all coming out? Is there, could you explain the licensing issues? Um, well, I don't really know how that works, but I'm taking a guess, so Shimano, what they typically do is they develop it themselves, they want to refine it, they want to make sure it's available on all of their hubs, i.e. SLX, XT, XTR, at all price points. Yes. Um, and then, of course, they're going to license that out for other manufacturers to use. Uh, one of the first, of, of course, was DT, which we tried out last year. Yeah, and now there is Mavic, Hope, Industry 9, Fulcrum, Chris King, Raceface, so it's kind of getting to almost industry-wide. Yeah. That license is really being extended, which means more people can manufacture the micro spline, which I think is good news. I think it's great, yeah, because there's more choice in 12 speed now. You can have SRAM, you can have Shimano, of course, there's other brands offering 12 speed cassettes, but none are offering them with the tiny little 10 tooth yet. Uh, so that's very cool. Now, if you've got a bit of um, spare Christmas money left over, well, there's been some interesting stuff going on Instagram to whet your appetite about how you can spend it. Brett Reader has pretty much got not a Kashima Forks, a Kashima bike. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. What the heck by Jeebus? It's what? pretty incredible. So Kashima is one of these things, isn't it? It's like, um, I, I don't really know what it is that makes people like Kashima coating so much. So it's the slippery coating you get on Fox Forks. And frying pans. And, um, and frying pans, yeah, <laughs> apparently. Um, it's a super slippery surface coating. RockShox have their black coating, which offers something similar in the RockShox world. In the Fox world, it's gold. And people seem to like gold, and Rido has got a completely gold bike. Um, it's pretty bonkers, but I think he's good enough to put it I on. think he pulls it off. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there was a guy Colin. Colin likes bikes. Colin likes now bikes. Now you, you threw up this Instagram page, it's yeah. pretty remarkable. Yeah. So, well, the, the thing that actually drew me to it initially was this cut and shut scooter and bike. So it's a single speed back end of a bike and the front end of a scooter, just because I think it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And it's, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Colin Furs and a sort of mad, mad man sort of yeah. thing in a workshop, but this guy just does bikes. Uh, and he's also been working on a linkage fork. So on screen now, you can see a little animation. Uh, please make sure you head through to his Instagram page. We're putting a link underneath this video so you can check that out and see how cool this guy is. But he's basically developed a linkage fork with all the same sort of traits that you're starting to see on the trust linkage forks and emotions and various other ones with uh, anti-dive properties and constant geometry, basically constant trail. Super interesting to see. And he's also mentioned that he'd like to make it a single leg and use Reynolds tubing which would be pretty nice, wouldn't it? I'd love to see that. I, I think we should go and visit Mr. Colin Likes Bikes if he would have us. Because yes, I think he seems a really interesting guy and I reckon there could be some cool collaborations. Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe watch the space. Um, hi Colin, if you're watching. Hello. Uh, last up in news this week is, uh, we just want to announce, we're now riding for Vittoria tyres, which is really cool, especially from my point of view, because actually I've been to the factory and I've seen how they make their things. Uh, super interesting, they use that graphene wonder stuff in the tyres. 
four compounds available there and there's loads of different tire options. Uh, currently, we just have a couple of sets in the office, so uh, we're waiting for our delivery, which is due any time now. So we'll do a range overview when they're here, but here's a couple of clips from the factory. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. That, of course, is where you keep your bikes. Could be the garden shed, could be under the stairs, could be in the loft. Uh, whatever it is, if you've got one, take some photos of it. Let us know all about yourselves and your bike cave and send them in. There's a link right there. Um, first one this week, this one's from the Philippines, from Manila. Uh, this is from Cap. Uh, this is a bit of a, an outdoor bike cave. It's pretty cool. I, I think nice and light, nice and airy. I, Philippines is on my list of places that I need to visit at some point and we seem to be getting a lot of viewers sending stuff in from the Philippines mm. So I think that sounds like there's a pretty good community going on out there And this is cool plenty of bikes going on. There's some jackal kids bikes a couple of giants I'm not sure what that is. Is that a giant? I think it's a rain The new rain 29 I think. Oh, yeah Super cool really really interesting bike that those rains. Yeah, nice to see and pretty cool to have an outdoor cave I mean you couldn't really do that in the UK You know, well actually yeah, Steve Jones does but uh, <laughs> But uh, he's very different. <laughs> Next up, we have Robert in the Oregon coast. And I mean, there's a lot going on this one. It looks pretty cool. He, I see straight away he's got one of those specialized enduros with that big fork on. I think it was 2008, 2009. Yeah. And I lusted after one of them. Do you know what? It was quite forward thinking of them to have a twin crown fork. It was indeed. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Chris Porter, if he's watching, he might even vaguely acknowledge that. <laughs> um, so. But it's a good idea, and for the reasons I was trying to avoid the binding and that, forgetting the fact that it was a specialised fork and, you know, it would be probably under the impression that it should be made by a suspension company as opposed to a bike company, but uh, they did it and it worked really well yeah. for the time. I love the fact there's a like, clearly massive outdoor living thing going on. You've got sort of a paddleboard or um, what are they, kayaks, can't really see what they are from that angle. They look um, like sea kayaks maybe. Yeah, sea kayaks, I think you're right, yeah. Uh, you've got sex wax up on the back there, so I'm guessing you're a surfer as well. Um, unless you're into other stuff. Um, dartboard, that's quite English. Um, is that for golf? Uh, Just smashing the golf balls I into the net? I think it is, yeah, that's right, it's a golf ball. There's none of many talents. Yeah. Yeah, lots of things going on. I love that retro Yamaha jersey oh. hanging up at the back. That is well cool. Posts on the ceiling as well. Yeah, obviously into your GP stuff as well. Look at the posters on the wall there. Nice. And some fishing stuff as well. I wonder if you've got like a Shimano XTR fishing rod. Apparently the Shimano stuff's really good. I know nothing about fishing. The only time I've ever gone fishing properly was, I mean, it was literally like a salmon farm. So it's essentially shooting fish in a barrel. Was that, <laughs> you were that guaranteed. And, um, was this a fun this one, like, this one I was younger and the guy said, right, here's the rod yeah. and here's a plank of wood with a nail in it for when you catch it. Wow. <laughs> it was absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> never, never fished again. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> so bad. Oh, no, um, I love, love your spot, Robert. It's really cool. There's loads of stuff going on. I love it when you walk into somewhere and you're like, your eyes are drawn to every part. I like, I like the way those cone spanners are as well. Just yeah, that's cool. Actually, go with a magnet band. Ice tools. Yeah, nice. Next, we've got one from Barry, and he's got well many foes, Whoa. many fat bikes. Actually, got look, some cool frames. You've got a banshee, some foes, some orange. So, Foes bikes yeah. do it for me. That's a Foes with a Kernet shock as well. That's those crazy. They want a two yeah. to one ratio. Yeah, with a massive shock. Um, those things are phenomenal, but um, cost yeah. a fortune. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really expensive shocks, but absolutely uh, fantastic. Probably like a stable platform valve on them. Nice setup you've got there. Lots yeah, of little parts trays. That's, that's ridiculous organised. You've even got labels on each Ooh, one of them. I love a good label maker. Yeah, that's, that, that hits your OCD, doesn't it? Yeah, big time. And look at that, it's got two vice as well. It's got a little tiny hobby vice and a like a four inch classic, or yes. maybe a six. And he's also got one of the little stools with got the parts tray on the bottom so you can roll oh, around the workshop with your tools. Bit of, or biscuits, yeah, <laughs> biscuit tray. <laughs> Why do I ever think of that? Nice, <laughs> yeah, looking good, mate. Awesome. God, look how clean and tiny oh, it is, though. Goodness. That's ridiculous. You've even got your, your chairs stored away. That has got to be one of the best looking little yeah, workspaces I've seen. Really That's quite really impressive. nice. And that is another week for harrowing fishing tales and <laughs> bike game. Don't forget to get to keep sending them in, guys. Cheers. So now it's time for Top Mods, where we can showcase all the awesome work you do on your bikes. So first submission is from William with his Bird Full Suspension Aeris MK 1.5. Hmm. And I mean, the colour coordination on this one is it's a damn, yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive. 
Good price those birds, by all accounts. Good, yeah. good job, Michelle. Super UK brand. Yeah. 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 Loads of stuff going on there. So we've got matching grips, you've got those decals on the uh, E13 wheels there. It looks like the, the forks have got some purple going on as well. Oh, nice. Can't quite see in there. The shot can as well. Even the cranks, actually. Even the Oh, and the bolt. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's just got like um, holy cool, holy. cool decals. Yeah, it looks nice, mate. Really nice. Chromag bars on there as well. The Chromag stem. They're quite cool, aren't they? Chromag as a brand. I think it's got one of those um, 76 components um, top tube garment mounts as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Which are. Very nice. That's, yeah, that's I've a good shell. Yeah, nice and neat, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. You see it a bit better there. Look at that. I guess that's one of those bikes is long enough to get it, you know? Some bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going exactly. to be in like the knee in interference <laughs> zone. Yeah, also got a Fidlock universal bottle mount. So that's quite good, even though the um, you've got the uh, bottle in the um, dog egg. The dog egg. Dog egg zone, sure. but sometimes needs must. Although you know? now I've um, gone to a bottle, bottle inside the triangle. Yep. I'm getting ill more often. I don't know if I was building up some kind of immunity when I had it on the down tube. <laughs> so, you know, it's half, half, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I, I think it's your persistence to ride in <laughs> conditions every lunchtime, <laughs> personally. He nearly gave up yesterday. Yesterday he was a trying He nearly gave up, yeah. yeah. No, I came back pretty cheesed <laughs> off. Pretty cheesed off. I left to go out for, for a walk at lunch to get some stuff and screw fix, and he went out for a ride. And as soon as I walked out the door, it rained like it hasn't yeah. rained before. I was thinking, he's only out of the t-shirt. It was. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, less said about that yeah. one there. <laughs> uh, next up is from John. Now this one I particularly like because I remember when these came out. This is a 2017 Diamondback release. They always had the different colour rear end on them. The one I'd seen had the red rear end. And although it looked kind of cool, I always found it a bit strange. Mm. Like, it doesn't quite add up. A bit disjointed. Yeah, but he's done a full, full respray. Oh, yeah. Done, like, and it looks like a proper job as well. He's also gone for like um, protection in the sort of zones where ankle rub happens yeah. and on the top tube there. It is really neat. Really that decent. Really he's cool put new shape. bearings and bushings in there as well. Um, new hoses and cables and stuff like that. But I think that looks amazing. Mm, I that, think you know, really good. if you didn't know that was a respray, like, yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome job from John there. Speaking of resprays, was this one respray? Yeah, wow. Because that's so, not a stock colour, eh? Do you know what? I thought that was a brand new Cannondale for a yeah. second with that graphic. I guess that's what, what James wanted us to think. So it's a 2015 Carbon Jackal, full professional respray. He says, shout out to Cy Smith. New bearings and everything. The first picture is how the bike came full, fully modded. Man, that's like, that's an amazing effort, mm. like on there. I've got to say, I love the tan walls. Tan walls. I'm such a dog. sucker for them. Yeah. They may not be the best, but they do look really cool. They do look really cool. They might, they might could buy a look longer as well, I think. Do you so, reckon? Yeah, I think so. Huh. Yeah, I've just got a theory about that. No, we'll, I mean, no, I, I can see where it comes from, yeah. for sure. They're yeah, good if your bike's a bit short, tall and steep, if you put the tan walls on it. It fixes the geometry. 100%, yeah. Oh, wow. It does. Yeah. There we go. Uh, it's like being a front, front man in the band. It's not about what you sound like, is it? It's what, what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I was always on the drums. <laughs> <laughs> no, not been the band. <laughs> but no, no, it's really nice. So it's got those Matic forks on there. Um, oil slick hubs. Like, looking looking really good, to be Actually, fair. Cool. And you've got another one another as well. Another one. So you've got an alloy one and the carbon one, which... So what we're we talking is the alloy, your daily driver, and uh, the carbon, your weekend special drive, or it looks it looks like that way. To be yeah. honest, it looks like that's your your ship to go out and take a bit of a beast in. And I've also noticed you've got a couple of old Ooh. retro cannons tucked away there, which is really nice to see. Um, not necessarily in order though, because the one on the far right has got V brakes on, and the one nearer has got uh, canties on. I'd love to see some pictures of those bikes. I'm hoping you sent some in for a rewind. Uh, just be nice to see them. Always appreciate the old Cannondales because they're the first people to do oversized alloy tubing. Yeah. You know, they just look really cool. I mean, they were so overpriced at the time, but just made you want one more. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, nice. Nice work, guys. Good stuff. Oh, one other little uh, top mod here. Or well, this could go in Bike Cave, I guess. I just want to give a shout out. I'm going to read this out word for word. Hi, Doddy. Saw you talking about wanting a shoe dryer and thought I'd add a little late Christmas present for you, if a little late for the 25th, from uh, Morton Frankfire. So, Morton, this is... I can't believe you've actually got me Morton a shoe Frank dryer. Morton got me a shoe dryer. What Check a guy. What a guy. <laughs> so that is going straight in my workshop later on. Um, I think this opens up somehow without breaking. Yeah, you plug it in, put your wet shoes on there. Sick! You dry them. 
It was amazing. You could have done that yesterday, to be honest. Yeah, I could if have. Been. Still kill I could still, I'll still see wet shoes in the car. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, thank you so much. That is amazing. Um, no one sends us stuff. Uh, if anyone else wants to send us stuff for the new set, maybe, or you want to send Henry anything, and we send me anything, send us stuff. We love stuff. <laughs> okay, now it's time for Rewind, and a little bit different, actually, this time. It's something that turned up just before Christmas for me and literally made my year. So a lot of you will know that I've wanted one of these frames pretty much forever, and now I've got one. Um, I've got to say a massive thank you to Basti, a friend of mine I've known for many years. He's worked for Resolution and various places in the bike world. Um, sorry, just blocking Henry out there. <laughs> I thought a little bit. He's giving me more drum of the band syndrome. As wherever I go, the seat <laughs> seems to appear. Be in the way. This way. This way. There we go. Um, but I bumped into him at Sea Otter in Girona and he said he had a frame for me. I was like, yeah, cool, um, let me know how much you want for it. And he's actually given me this for free because he's actually restored a better condition one and basically couldn't be bothered to finish this one. Um, so it does need full new like bushings and pivots, the shot needs a rebuild, uh, the fork's been leaking and stuff, but I've got the frame I've wanted since I was a child, basically. Uh, so I'm gonna do a bit of a rewind project, I guess bring it back to life. Um, we're gonna make a few videos. If there's anything you'd like to see me put on this, let us know, any of you Rewind uh, fans out there. I'm thinking it needs a Tioga disc drive on the back, just because I never had one of those either. And my aim would be to try and get it together, if not a rideable state, and take it to the Mulvans. If it's rideable, I'll race it. If it's not rideable, I'll display it. Um, one way or another, hopefully I'll see you at the Mulvans with a restored version of this bike. And that is it for another week's GMBN Tech Show. Now, if you want to stick with the channel, click down here for your tour of the USE Exposure. Ah, uh, yeah. Which was yeah. bloody cool, actually. It was enlightening, yeah. <laughs> and uh, click down here if you want to see Henry talk about power meters and how you can use those in training. And that's with Chris Opie from GCN, who is just a powerhouse. A uh, really insightful video, actually. I know, I it's fun it. to film. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, as always, don't forget to uh, click subscribe, share our content around, give us a thumbs up, and hit that bell for notifications. Cheers. Cheers, guys.